Today's episode of the Counseling Tutor Podcast is sponsored by Web Healer. You're a counselor in private practice and you need a website, or you've got an existing website which you need help with. Web Healer are offering Counseling Tutor Podcast listeners, that's you, £100 off the cost of a website design and build. Now, Web Healer specialize in websites for counselors and psychotherapists. It's what they do. And the Web Healer team provide a completely non technical, done for you solution, leaving you to focus your time on your clients. Operating for 20 years, Web Healer are a trusted resource amongst counselors when it comes to getting your practice online. So get the package details and claim your £100 off coupon for your new website by going to counsellingtutor.com forward slash website. That's counsellingtutor.com forward slash website. Welcome to the Counselling Tutor Podcast, the must listen to podcast for counsellors, psychotherapists, and counselling students. Here are your hosts, Rory Lees Oaks and Ken Kelly. Hi, I'm Rory, and welcome to this special edition of the Counselling Tutor Podcast. Ken is taking a well earned break, but I'm joined by Darren McLaughlin from Web Healer, who's here to bring you his expertise and tips on web design. So, Dara, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Rory. How's it going? And uh, how's it going to all the listeners out there today? Yeah, well, it's going okay here at Counselling Towers, I can tell you that. And what we're going to be looking at is the digital you, why a professional online presence matters. So I guess that's the first question. Why does a professional online presence matter, Dara? Well, Rory, it's a really relevant question, especially this time of year. Um, look, at we're, we're well into the autumn now at this stage. Um, people have come to the end of their studies just before the summer. They've had some time to consider their next move. And maybe they're thinking about making the leap into private practice. And, you know, we've got a few things to talk about today. And I, I'd really like to frame the conversation Um thinking that your website is a tool for your business. And if you're thinking about going towards private practice, then you need tools in order to help you succeed. And your website and an online presence and a well-constructed online presence is one of those tools that is just a non-negotiable. You need it. So I'd like to delve into that in a little bit of detail today, share with the listeners a couple of things to consider, little pointers, tips, and so on to really maximize their presence online. Yes, because I guess that when you start in private practice, you are running a business. I mean, sometimes the word business grates with people a bit. They think of people in, you know, hats and cigars and, you know, uh, kind of thing. But a business is where you're basically charging a fee for your time. And there's a lot of people who've spent a lot of money getting the qualifications and, you know, they deserve to be paid what they're worth. So, do you think that realizing that you're actually realizing you're a business is an important part of developing for a professional therapist? Absolutely. I, I think, you know, we have conversations with, with British counselors and psychotherapists every week, every day. And although we don't get into the, the granularity of do they see themselves as a business, we certainly see a theme coming through, especially from newly qualified students who are looking to make that move into private practice and that is that they don't really see their website as a means to attract customers it's it's almost like a tick box that they need to complete in order to move forward and i would encourage all listeners to zoom out for a moment and as you say be okay with the fact that you are now in business you are a solopreneur you are a solo trader you are a business you pay your taxes rory you know you pay hmrc Therefore, you should bask in the glory that is having your own business and embrace it. And, you know, if you do that, I think you're going to put yourself in a really good position to have a very successful and thriving private practice, which is what it's all about. You spent and invested all that money in educating yourself and enabling yourself to help others. Now it's your duty to go out there and do it, to do, by, do right by them, do right by yourself. 
and, and realize your potential as a counselor. Now, that might sound a little bit superlative, but that is the reality. And a website can help you maximize the success and the chance of success for your practice. And so when you approach that website and your online presence, you need to frame everything that this is a business, I am putting in inputs and I want outputs. And if you do that, Rory, you're going to be successful when it comes to your online presence. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I guess when people land on websites, you know, there's they're, they're making a decision about the the integrity of that website and, and indeed the person who's running it, the practitioner, mm. in a very short space of time. And we know that no like and trust is the magic ingredient for people to maybe investigate further, maybe reach out and contact you. So what is what is one of the quick wins that you can have on a website that would make people stay on, around the website a bit longer and maybe start developing that know, like, and trust? Yeah, exactly. And, and I also like to refer to it as rapport. You know, you need to establish connection with that website visitor. Now, if someone phones you up and you begin a conversation about perhaps, you know, how you can help them and so on, there's an opportunity to have a real time live discussion with them about you as a therapist and how you can assist them. However, with the website, it's it's a static piece of information. So you need to really think about what you put on that website so that it is your representative operating 24 seven and that it works very hard to build that no like and trust, to build that rapport with the visitor. And for me, thinking about it, why is somebody on your website? They're on your website because they need help and they need help with possibly a very sensitive subject, which is totally understandable. And so, how can we make that person feel comfortable with us as an individual? And how can we build confidence with that person that you are the person who's going to help them bridge the gap to take the next step and to, you know, put their mind at ease. So let's, let's, let's break into that. First of all, I'm a big believer in a well taken photograph, a well lit natural photograph of yourself People are very judgmental. Let's just call it like it is. But this is a very personal relationship you're having with the client. You're going to be working with them one-to-one -one and people want to see who they're working with. You know, just as human beings, we can often make split second decisions, rightly or wrongly, about the person that's in front of us. But listen, without a picture, you are, you are reducing straight away the chances that that person is going to reach out. And remember, this is about converting people who are on your website to people who are pressing the contact button. So don't be putting barriers in the way. Put up a picture of yourself, make it natural, be yourself. And I think it's it's definitely going to work in your favor. That's the first thing. Um, second thing is, and I'm saying this, obviously, I'm not from a counseling background, although I have the pleasure of working with counselors every day. But I know self-disclosure is a, is, is a thing that counselors are told not to do particularly or, or to limit it to a certain extent. In fact, I've even seen in the Counseling Tutor Facebook how a lot of the members there will discuss, you know, a, a potential client has asked me about myself and how do I react? So it is very much a, uh, it, it's, it's not a black and white area, so to speak. So I think, however, it is important that there is some element of disclosure. People want to know you. They want to identify with you. And if you have been through, to some extent, the type of things that that person is going through or has been through, I think instantly they can build a connection with you. And connection is trust. Trust is safety. And safety means that they're at ease and they're happy to make contact with you. So I would encourage you to think, what can I? What information can I put on the website that is going to build that trust with somebody who I can, who I know I can help? Because a lot of counselors out there, they do have their particular areas of interest, um, and I think they should think about those and they should think about how can I convey my experience or my interest in this area and give confidence to those website visitors so that they will reach out. Um, and obviously that goes then, you know, on to the next thing, which is maybe the official side of things, the, the more, yes, the more official side of things, which are qualifications and your experience. It's very important to list out your qualifications and experience, Rory, because people will then know when they, you know, they get digging down into it, that you are qualified, that you've been through the rigors of, you know, um, student life 
and you are in a good place and ready to help them. Really, really important. Now, obviously that dovetails into what Google is looking for as well. Um, but I'm talking about the human element of it here. People want to know that you have experience, that you have qualifications. Uh, at the end of the day, if, if I'm looking for you know a builder, I want to make sure that the builder knows how to build a straight wall. I want to know that he has some element of qualifications. And you know, I think I'm right in saying that my mental health is probably a little bit more important and delicate and sensitive than a, a, a well-built wall. So I'm going to make sure that the therapist I'm working with has the correct qualifications. And you got to put it out there. You got to let them know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is a <clears throat> excellent overview of what makes a web page relatable. And in terms of the headshot, you know, I've got an ancient, I've got an ancient iPhone. Mine's mine's so ancient it creaks when I switch it on. Um, but it does have a camera, and it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a quite a good camera, and it has something called a portrait mode. So here's a top tip: if you want a nice, well lit picture uh, for your web website. Get yourself a friend. Go out um, on a day that's not particularly sunny. Overcast days are better, round about 12 o'clock. Stand yourself next to uh, you know, some trees or something like that and get your friend to take a picture of you with the portrait mode. And what it does is it will blur out the background and it will put you in sharp focus and the the clouds will make soft lighting like they do in a in a photo studio so it won't be harsh and cast lots of shadows. And you could do that for free. Literally for yep. free. <laughs> and literally for free. And and look, at phone technology is so amazing these days that we take it for granted. But when it comes to things like that, it makes such a difference. You know, we 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 get photos from our clients and sometimes, frankly, they, they could be done better. And it's advice like that that's actionable. It's free. It's simple. Makes all, all the difference. So really great advice. I love it. Yeah, and also you could, uh, and I, th I think I think a lot of people who are brought up in the age of film, as I was, get a little bit worried about taking more than one picture because in those days you only have thirty six pictures on a roll of film. Nowadays you can take as many pictures as you want <laughs> with a phone. So don't don't limit yourself to one image. Just take a lot and then just select them out. And I'll give exactly. you. I'll give you a pro tip. I, I worked in photographic studios and I can tell you that even in the days of film, they would take hundreds of images and pick out one or two that were the best. Um, so that's a, that's a pro tip. And also, I also think it's interesting about the self-disclosure, just talking just a little bit about your motivations to become a therapist. You don't have to delve into your own history, but I think that idea that you know you too may have been there or what what is it that made you become a, a therapist i think that is is um, very very important because it's a connection you don't have to speak too much about yourself but it's a connection and um, qualifications of experience of course google now looks for that when we'll be talking about seo search engine optimization but google looks now for authority and authority is qualification so you know, wow, that is really, really good advice. Now, we've got a nice web page. We've got a picture, a nicely took picture. We've got a little bit about yourself. What else needs to go onto that website to get people to convert and to, to get in contact with you? Okay. Well, the next thing that I really recommend is a series of FAQs or indeed a short summary of what a session looks like when you're working with somebody. Again, bear in mind here that somebody may have never seen a therapist before. So this is complete unknown to them. They're putting their life in your hands. They're ringing you up saying, listen, I need assistance here. I want to come and see you or I want to do an online session. They have no idea what to expect. And so there's going to be potentially some anxiety, some fear around that. And so what you want to do, in my opinion, is you want to detail out quite clearly what a typical session looks like, or indeed what the therapy journey looks like. Some people don't know how many sessions they need to come to for. Um, and I think, you know, you, you can't, you can't uh, forecast that because everybody is different with a different set of circumstances. But I think it's really important that you outline what the journey looks like, because what the person will do is as they're reading this, they will paint a picture in their head and they'll build comfort with that. And they'll say, oh, okay, right. This is how it goes. This is how it goes. Excellent. Okay. I'm, I'm more at ease with this. If you can imagine going to somebody's website 
and them omitting that, well, one person omitting it, one person having it in full detail. Who do you think somebody who might be a little bit apprehensive about making that first step would call? They're going to call the person that clearly details what the journey looks like. It's just, it's a no brainer as, as far as I'm concerned. So I think really important to have that in there. Now, I did mention FAQs as well, because I think we can get a little bit more into the granularity or the, the specificities of the of an actual session. So the FAQs there might be like, how many sessions do I need to see you? Um, you know, how often do I need to see you? Again, somebody who's n- not familiar with the client-therapist relationship doesn't know how much investment of time they need to make in this journey. So I think detailing out that is really good. But as much as this is really useful to the person who's reading the website, bear in mind all the while you're building keywords and key phrases for the thing that we're going to talk about next, which is you know the search engine optimization. So this is very much a double-edged sword and I think uh, will work really well for you. So FAQs, really, really important. And I think lastly, you know, uh, this is what it's all about call to action. I I want to mention it because I think we can't leave it out. It's a call to action. How do you get in touch with me? What is the next step? If you again guide people through the next um, phase, which would be reach out to me for an initial conversation. A lot of counselors do offer a quick chat for 10 or 15 minutes. See if you've got that no like and trust. See if it translates from the webpage onto a telephone call. Um, I think you want to be kind of guiding somebody towards that all the time this is your website is a tool it's a business tool and now it's time to you know to usher people to that next stage if everything else lines up for them so you want to be offering them that 15 minute chat the you know uh, online booking of a short zoom and so forth really really important to finish out and to convert that person into a potential client indeed and also i guess you know we're talking about using zoom or online platforms but that could be an in the room conversation you could offer them you know 15 minutes i know some offer half an hour where they could come and meet up and you could they could it's a get to know you session um one of the things we know about that is that it does convert people because people are very nervous i mean you know when i practiced i always had a half an hour free introductory session where people could come come and meet me have a have a chat about what was on their mind and then Um, we could say, well, look, you know, that's something I could help you with. And if you wanted to book some sessions, um, then we could do that. And almost certainly that gave people the confidence to engage in therapy. Because as a therapist, sometimes clients need the confidence to engage. It's a big step. It's a very, very big step. And they need that confidence to be able to say, yes, that's the person for me. I need that help. I want you to help me. Totally agree. And look, at to a certain extent, it's the very same with the web healer business. Every day we have a calendar of calls with counselors in the UK who want a website. Now, they don't go 100 miles an hour and just pay for a website and go hell for leather at it. Quite the opposite. They make time to call us. We make time to speak with them to talk to them about the process, to put their mind at ease about any technical elements that they they you know may be concerned about, to explain everything from turnaround times to price and whatnot. So this pre-sales meeting is quite the norm for a business. And we come back and we loop back to that initial point that I make. You are now a business. You are now in business. And this is a normal anatomy of the business relationship. Okay, it's a very sensitive relationship, and I totally acknowledge that. But I want to really empower people to see beyond that and to say that, you know what, you need to do things that other people do that work. And this chat, I think, is super. And you're right, it does convert because it instantly gives people the opportunity to understand. I know for a fact that if we decided that we just weren't going to talk to anybody before they came on board, We wouldn't work with anybody because websites can be inherently technical. Not everybody is technical. We understand that. And that's why we make that available. And other businesses are the same in in, in lots of different industries. You just need to do it, Rory. You just need to do it. It has to be done. Yes. And these are the elements of an ethical, sustainable practice. You know, it's it's about going in with the, the correct attitude 
as I say, you're not going to be a person who wears a top hat and smokes a big cigar and drives a, a Rolls Royce. I mean, maybe you are, and if that is, again, good luck to you. But, you know, running it as a business means that you can, can sustain yourself as a therapist and do that good work. And I want to put a bit of a pause in, because I've not told Dara this, but we've got a bit of a giveaway um, for those people who want to go to a website. So if you're listening to this episode and you want to see the show notes, it's a special edition. It's broadcast on the 28th of the 10th, 2023, and it will sit between episode 278 and 279 on our website. So counsellingtutor.com, the podcast tab, yeah? Go down, find this episode that sits between 278 and 279, and we will give you a free download on how to take a professional picture for your website wow that's well, that's very actionable i love it and it's it's really going to add a lot of value to people and rory you you mentioned a key word there for me which is sustainability your practice has to be sustainable you know what is the point in investing all of that time those late hours those early mornings in the books writing case studies doing your hours in some case, unfortunately, people are working and having to work for free to build those hours. You owe it to yourself to create a sustainable practice. And you can do that ethically. And for me, on the outside, ethically is making your practice open to everybody who wants counseling and help and you know, giving them the opportunity to get that. And you can you could tick all those boxes, the ethics, the sustainability of it, but being sustainable is so important. You, you've spent so much time in becoming a counselor. You owe it to yourself to uh, live that out for as long as you possibly can, you know? So sustainability, really, really important. Yes. And I guess that once we've got that in place, the next, the next piece of work is getting found. It's a crowded space, isn't it? You type in teacup, into the search engine and you'll have thousands of people selling teacups. One of my special interests, by the way, I love a, a good cup of tea. <laughs> um, I really do. And uh, Earl Grey, if possible. And um, getting found is important. And we, we call that search engine optimization. Very technical word, but it means that when people type in to, the, to Google or whatever browser you use, they will, they will get a match, a very accurate match to what they're looking for. And that's done by making sure you have set your website up with the correct keywords to be found. So Dara's going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, look, at this is an evolving area. And you're right, Rory, now, no matter what you type in, there is so much competition. If you type even the most remote keyword in Google, Google will come back and say, yes, we have found 3 million results. It's a crowded space. And certainly when we began building websites back in 2002, competition and the online landscape was much different. It was much easier to get ranked in the search engines really well. Now the search engines employ so many more data points and metrics in order to rank websites. And what I mean by that is things like, for example, your location. If you're looking, if you Google counselor and you're based in London, you're going to get results for counselors based in London, not counselors who are somewhere else in the UK, up north, for example. And so that's just a very simple example of how, how search engines have evolved. And that wasn't always the case. They weren't always so, so sophisticated. But I want to ask your listeners if they were ever planning a trip somewhere and they were looking for a restaurant, they were looking for somewhere nice to eat. And let's just say, for example, they had a particular requirement that they really liked to eat in restaurants that favored organic produce. So they went Googling and they found a restaurant and they were on the restaurant and the Google was very overt and very uh, outright in saying, yes, we're a local, sustainable, organically sourced produce. And, you know, you would say, oh, fantastic, right? That ticks that box. Then you move to the next stage and you click their menu and there's a menu on the page. Fantastic. And then you go to see uh, their opening hours because, you know, you're planning a trip for Sunday lunch, perhaps. And yes, they're open on Sunday. Wow, fantastic. And then there's a contact form. I can get in contact or I can even better, I can book now. I can reserve my table so I can arrange my holiday and be totally at ease with the fact that this restaurant that seems to tick all of my boxes is reserved for me and my guests. Okay. 
To me, that is search engine optimization. That website has met my needs as a searcher. So now I invite your listeners just to think for a moment, what information do I need to put on my website that gives a searcher who lands on my website that same feeling than that person looking for the restaurant? We've all been on those websites where you feel perfect. This is the one. This is the one. I've looked at 10 websites. This is the one I need. This is the service supplier. This is the restaurant. This is the whatever. This is the one. You want your website visitor saying this is the one. So we're matching the user intent. The user intent is somebody looking to find a counselor for a specific need. So it can be, you know, it could be a fear of flying, right? It would be very simple about it. If you have a website which has content specifically around the fear of flying, and you talk about what is the fear of flying, how it can develop, how it can uh, manifest itself, and how you can possibly work to overcome it. Now, I know that's a very simple example, but excuse me, <laughs> uh, coming from a non-counseling background, okay? I just want to keep it as generic as possible. But what I'm trying to illustrate here is you're giving a very complete view to the website visitor in terms of your experience and expertise around this particular area of concern. Now, if you think about your own practice and how you can help people and any maybe any specific areas that you would like to work with people on, do that on your website. Make it very clear about the start, the middle, and the end. When people read that content, as Google will, they will see that you are the go-to. You are the authority on this particular subject matter. Therefore, you are worthy of a good search engine ranking, but also of somebody making that connection. So SEO is, is, is two-sided. It's a nod to the search engines, but ultimately the search engines are only concerned with ranking what it can thinks, what it believes people will find useful. So if you build your website to be a trusted resource, informative, reassuring, then Google will rank you better. That is the bottom line. So it's expertise. I'm an expert on this subject matter. I have spent and invested. I'm an expert in this area. Trust, here's a picture of me. Here is a little bit of my self-disclosure, a little bit of information about me. These are really important things. I mentioned it on previous episodes that we've spoken, this concept of Google's EAT, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. You must build that with every word that you write. And if you can do that, you have SEO nailed. That is my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're moving now, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, from a, a, a generic, this is my product, sell me, website to a, this is how I can help you website where people come along, may read articles, may look for specific help or direction. And then they say, oh, this person's really good. Maybe I should contact them. And, you know, whatever it is, you may be looking for a bath and you type in, you know, what, what size tap should I buy? And you find a really good article on that website. And then you realize that actually that, 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 that company sells baths as well. So you're, you're offering a service, you're answering questions and you're, you're establishing authority. And it's a great opportunity as well to pop at the bottom of your blog. Why don't you share this on your social media? So you get it onto people's social media. And I can't let social media go without mentioning, you know, if you're not a member of the Counselling Tutor group, why don't you count Counselling Tutor into Facebook and you can come and join us. And you see a lot of people talking about how to run ethical, sustainable practices. Yes, it's, it's the, whole, the whole essence of search engines is about providing that value, isn't it, Dara? It is because, Rory, we use Google. I mean, let's let's call a spade a spade. Google is the go-to. Uh, there are other search engines, but Google really is the only show in town. We use Google because it returns useful results. If you're looking for a blue teacup and you get red mugs, you know, you might be a little bit miffed about it. And you might say, well, I think it's time to try Bing or Yahoo or A another. And so... Google trades on its ability to accurately return results to people which are useful. And my proposition to everybody is make your website as useful as possible to potential clients. You can't just have a one pager because if you have a one pager, how can you convey in that one page how much more useful you are than somebody who has multiple pages? Now, 
uh, don't get caught up on, on the term page. Even if it's, uh, if I have 200 words on my website, but a colleague in the same town or village in the UK has 2000 words on the website, who is expressing themselves more and their usefulness to the search engines and therefore ultimately to people who are going to click on that link? Well, well I think we know it's the person with 2000. As long as obviously it's not absolute rubbish that you're writing, but will it make the assumption that it's not? And certainly if you're working with WebEater, I can assure you that we would let you put that up there anyways. We'll guide you every step of the way. But it's really important that you also do more than your colleagues in the same space. I mean, it, you are in business, there is competition and there's competition. There's only one page, one in Google. There's only one position, one in Google. So you must work to do more, to write more, to keep your website updated more, and to show more and more Google that you are the go-to resource for people who are looking for X, Y, Z. Might be counseling in a particular area, might be help with a specific issue. Um, it could be a specific um, section of society that you work with, whatever it might be, it's the onus is on you to go all out in showing Google that you are the go-to resource. You're the trusted um, expert on the matter. Yes, and I think I heard you. I think I pick up on the fact that you know if you're if you're looking for a website developer, you mentioned the word you would guide them, Dara, and I think that's that's part of it, that's part of the the joy of working with Web Healer, is that you're not just a take the text and slap it on the on the page, you you employ experts who will help and guide uh, people who are producing web pages. Maybe this is their first time. Maybe this is something that might be a bit scary. And you'll work with them to make sure they get the website that they want. Well, it's not sustainable, Rory, if we don't. Because if you build a website that doesn't take some of the things that I've mentioned into account today, and look at, I've been at this for quite a long time. I've seen what works. I know what works. And we have, thankfully, a very large data set so that when we see Google maybe paying more attention to something, we can see the trends emerging. But if you implement some or all of some the, the things we have spoken about today, I can assure you your website is going to perform better and it's going to bring you more clients. And that's what it's all about. Sustainable practice, bringing you more clients. The last thing we want is you building a website having expectation that oh, I'm going to be on page one, I'm going to be wearing that top hat and that Rolls Royce is going to be blue, <laughs> you know? And the next thing you know, six months time, you're not getting an email or a call and you're thinking to yourself, I'm out, I'm out. Uh, all because you didn't really kind of put that effort into the website. So it's, it's our obligation to advise people and any good designer. And that's why we're all for maybe steering away from the DIYs simply because you don't have a trusted partner to guide you. And maybe if it's your second or third website, your old hat, you're fine. You're no, no problem at all. But I think if you're just getting started and especially this time of year, there's a lot of people going into private practice. I think it's really important that you work with someone who's going to guide you. That is just so important. Absolutely. And I guess as we come to the, the closing part of this interview, a lot of people will be thinking, well, that's all well and good, Rory and Dara, but how much is this going to cost? Um, you know, there's there's obviously a cost involved in building a website, but you came came up with an interesting reflection about the cost and the 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 value that a website will give you to kind of allay that cost. I guess. Speaking with my business hat on here, Rory, um, it's all about inputs and outputs. You know, you've invested four years plus um, or whatever it might be, learning the tools to help people. And now it's time for you to start to see a return. If you put money into a booking system or a membership to an ethical body, typically you see something coming back out of it. If you invest money, hard earned money in a website, it's only reasonable that you start to see a return. From our point of view, and this is why we're so excited about websites, if we can still be excited about them several thousand websites later, it doesn't take much for a website to wash its own face, frankly. We believe just one client through your website every year will make that website pay for itself. One client. And so one client, one client, one client. And I think 
that is why I don't think we can be any more conservative. <laughs> but I think that is literally it. You get two clients. Wow, brilliant. As a business owner myself, Rory, we take out ads and we don't continue with ads that don't work for us because we're business people. You know, we, we, we want a return on the investment we've made. And I can imagine somebody who's going into private practice, paying their taxes, looking at the end of the month, right? I have this bill, this bill, this bill, what's left for me? They want to make sure that their business is sustainable and a business tool like a website can yield that return for you. So don't be afraid of it from a cost point of view. Now, obviously, if you approach a website developer and they charge you thousands of pounds, then the numbers may alter. But it can be done whereby just one customer per year will pay for it. And obviously, the hope is that you're going to get a lot more than that. And if you follow some of the things that we've spoken about today, and if you have a look at the show notes that you've mentioned, Rory, on taking a good headshot, I think without doubt, you're going to see a lot more than that through your website, thus making it a fantastic tool for your business. Well, I mean, you can't say any more than that. And just just to remind everybody, if you want that uh, download and you want to look at the show notes for this episode, it was broadcast on the 28th of the 10th, 2023, sits between 278 and 279. Where do you find it? Counselingtutor.com podcast. You can search for importance of a professional online presence or just find us in the podcast feed. Um, we'll put in a free download for you how to take a high-quality professional picture for your website. Dara, thank you so much for bringing all this valuable information. This is a treasure trove of information. It's pure gold. And again, thank you for joining us. Super, Rory. Thanks so much yourself. Thank you for listening to the Counselling Tutor Podcast. Find the show notes for this episode by visiting counsellingtutor.com.